Hello, radio friends. This is Brother Bill Shelton of the Right Side Ministry. I'd like to take this time and opportunity to thank you for tuning in today. I'd like to remind you we're on this station the same time and day each week. Also, you can listen on YouTube.com, Right Side Ministries, or write to the Right Side Ministry, P.O. Box 1346, Berea, Kentucky, 4043, or you can email me at rightsideministries at hotmail.com. That is, if you have prayer requests that you would like for me to go to the throne of grace about, each time that I go to the throne of grace, I will take those prayer requests uh, to the Lord. Now, the ones that sees me in person, uh, you can tell me uh, in person, and uh, I'll still do that as well. However, we do not mention names on the air because some people don't like their name being mentioned, but we will take your prayer requests to the throne of grace each time we go to the Lord in prayer. Now, however, if you would uh, like to, uh, I would like for you to let me know uh, if you, we are getting out in your locality, in, in your location, uh, just uh, drop me an email there and say, uh, Brother Shelton, you're reaching out here and you're reaching out there because it's just good to know how far we're getting out uh, through uh, on YouTube and uh, through by the radio waves. Now today, we uh, are going to uh, be reading from the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, I want to, I'll probably take it uh, verse uh, by verse. Uh, I want to uh, go over every verse, but the biggest majority of them I will. But you have uh, your Bibles there at home. You can turn to Daniel chapter 6. And I'm going to talk about today the man who was punished for praying. The man who was punished for praying. And uh, here in chapter 6 of Daniel, we see here, I want to read the first three verses, then we'll have a word of prayer. It pleased Daniel to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these presidents, I'm sorry, and over these three uh, presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no uh, damage, or in other words, here it says, uh, no loss in his revenue. And verse 3 says, Then Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because of an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Heavenly Father, as we humbly bow before you today, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to stand before this microphone and before the radio listening audience. And Father, we just pray today that you will take me and that you will hide me in the cross and that God, that people will uh, hear the word of God through me today, Lord. I'm not here to make a name for myself, but to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and my Lord. Father, I pray that I decrease, that you may increase. And Father, I pray now, Father, for that soul today that is unprepared to leave this world and go to a devil's hell. I pray, Father, that there might be something said today. Lord, will open their eyes and that they realize that there's a heaven again and a hell to shun. And heaven is a prepared place for prepared people, and hell is made for the devil and his angels. And Father, I pray today again that you will anoint me from the soles of my feet to the top of my head. Father, I pray, Father, for those today who are undergoing surgery. I just pray, God, that you will guide the surgeon's hand. And Lord, may they feel your presence, Lord. And Father, I pray, dear Jesus, maybe if there is one that lost and don't know you, Lord, maybe through the surgery or through the... Uh, that uh, you reveal yourself to them. And Father, maybe a chaplain or a minister coming into the hospital will talk to them about you and that they will come to know Jesus Christ uh, Father, from the, uh, as their Savior and Lord. Now, Father, again, we ask you to go with us through this broadcast, be with us throughout the remains of this day and through the remains of this week. Continue to guide and direct us. For Lord Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Neighbors, we'll be right back uh, with a message from God's Word after these messages in song. This world he created, oh the 
wonders he's done Keeps it perfectly spinning in the warmth of the sun There is nothing our God does not know or see And it's so amazing that he's mindful of me He's holy, he's holy. God is holy, God is holy. He owns it all and he's holy. I praise him and I adore him. I adore him and I marvel that he would love me. He's holy, he's holy. God is holy, God is holy. He owns it all and he's holy. I praise him and I adore him. I adore him and I marvel that he would love me. And earth in his hand And thousands of angels Await his command Yet he looked down Through the ages Even planted the tree He would carry to Calvary For you and for me Now heaven kissed this old world On a manger of hay When God came among us That wonderful day Yet he loved us so much That he sent his own son that's why I'm saved and my victory is won. He's holy, he's holy, God is holy, God is holy. He owns it all and he's holy. I praise him and I adore him. I adore him and I marvel that he would love me. He's holy, he's holy, God is holy, God is holy. He owns it all and he's holy. I praise him. And I adore him, I adore him, and I marvel that he would love me. I praise him, I praise and him. I adore him, I adore him, and I marvel that he would love me.
Messiah has come, in Him hope is found. Messiah has come, in Him hope is found. Amen. I hope you enjoyed those messages in song. Uh, they blessed my heart, and I'm sure that they will have blessed yours as well. As I spoke to you when I first signed on the air here, that we are preaching from the book of Daniel today, and the title of the message is The Man Who Was Punished for Praying. Now let's look here in verse six. I mean, verse two of chapter six, and he says, "Over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage, or in other words, no loss in uh, his revenue." We see here that Daniel was number one of the three presidents that here that uh, they had here, and in verse three. Uh, says then Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because of an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm now ladies and gentlemen now we see here Daniel not only had seniority and also I, I read uh, studying for this message here that he was a man of about 80 years uh, 80 years of age and at this time but not just seniority he also he also had superiority now we see here that he possessed an excellent spirit and ladies and gentlemen wouldn't it be something to for us to have an excellent spirit in us you know, the Bible says we do not wrestle against uh, flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers and principalities of the air. The devil is always, he's walking to and fro here on this earth, seeking whom he may devour. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, uh, every, uh, every day Satan is messing with this preacher. If he don't mess with me, uh, he'll mess with somebody else, or he'll mess with my wife and uh, get to say something to get me upset, or may say something to me to get her upset and, and ladies and gentlemen I'm telling you as a man uh, of God preaching God's word and loving the Lord I desire the prayers of each and every Christian out there because I want to be what God wants me to be and not what uh, Bill Shelton wants to be if I be what God wants me to be my friend I'll tell you that I'll have a more excellent spirit in me than what I have sometimes but anyway we see here, he not just had seniority, but also superiority. We see that he possessed an excellent spirit. In other words, meant Daniel was a spirit filled man. That's what I want to be. I want to be filled with the Spirit of God. Not just each time that I stand, uh, proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, but each time that uh, I get up out of the bed of the morning, I want to be a man that is filled with the Spirit of God, knows the Word of God, teaches the Word of God, preaches the Word of God, lift up the Word of God wherever I go. I want people to see Jesus in me. I don't want them to look at my past, ladies and gentlemen, but I want them to look to the future, not to the future of Bill Shelton, but to the future of God, my friend. I'm telling you today, when you open up your heart's door and you get down on your knees and you pray sincerely with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might and invite Christ into your heart and life, ladies and gentlemen, and seek God's will in your life, you will be I have an excellent spirit in you. You will be a spirit-filled man just like Daniel here. The king had such confidence in him that he placed Daniel next to himself in position and power. Ladies and gentlemen, I like to walk with God and talk with God every day. I know the devil a lot of times, he robs me of blessings sometimes when I'm not obedient to the Spirit of God, when God lays upon my heart. <coughs> <coughs> 
excuse me, when God lays up on my heart to pick up the word of God and I decline, I don't do it, I, I get my mind off on something else. But ladies and gentlemen, as I said a moment ago, the Bible says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers and principalities of uh, the air. Here in verse four, he says, then the president and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not but they could not find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful and neither was there any error or fault found in him. Now ladies and gentlemen, when you find yourself in a number of positions where it is in church or in politics or school or home, you will be watched by those who have a jealous spirit. We see here that uh, they couldn't find any fault in him. We cannot keep people from talking about us, ladies and gentlemen, but we can live a life as to make them liars uh, when they do that. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you today, my friend, we need to uh, pay attention and uh, read God's word and uh, meditate upon God's word and let God's word speak to our hearts. As I said here just a moment ago, we cannot keep people from talking about us. But as uh, I said that we can live such a life that we can uh, uh, prove to them that they're lying, that other people can see that they're lying about you. Because people wants to walk over, they want to hold an umbrella over you because things that you've done in your past. My friend, I'm telling you today, there's nobody walking around with a halo over their head. Not even Billy Graham, not anybody, my friend. Uh, uh, my pastor, your pastor, or whoever it is, there's nobody walking around with a halo, a halo over their head. Some of them think they got one over their head, but I'm telling you, my Bible tells me that nobody, uh, my friend, is perfect because the Bible says that we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Here, we see here in that verse again says, and I like to read that verse again, says, then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find none occasion nor fault. They couldn't find no fault in him. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Here in verse 5, we see the Bible says, Then said, These men we shall not find any occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing was the, uh, was the knew he was faith. They knew that he was faithful to God. Does people know today that you are faithful to God, the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm not talking about Buddha. I'm not talking about uh, uh, these uh, other gods. They, ladies and gentlemen, there's not but one God. And my friend, he's in heaven. And my heavenly father is seated next to him making intercessions for this old unworthy preacher. Each time I pray and each time my brothers and sisters in Christ pray and those who praise the sinner's prayer and invite Christ into their heart and life. So we see here the only thing was the that they knew that he was faithful to his God. His prayer life was something that was well known. So what are they going to do? They are going to draw conflict between the king and Daniel and his religion. In other words, we read here in a minute where they have taken, made out a decree, a decree and, and for uh, anybody that don't... Uh, Worship uh, the king, my friend, then uh, they will uh, be cast into a den of lions. Here in verse 6 we read, he says, And then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said, Thus unto him, King Darius live forever. In verse 7 he says, All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, say or accept of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So, and, and also here in verse 8 he says, Now, O king, 
established the decree and signed the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altered not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and decreed the king went ahead and he signed, he signed the writing. Here in verse 10, we see the steadfastness of Daniel here. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, now listen to what he's saying here. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Daniel had always went uh, there to his room in his, and he opened the windows and he looked toward Jerusalem and he prayed. I want you to notice here the reaction of Daniel uh, to this new law. Ladies and gentlemen, he opened the windows just like before uh, over the years. He simply did not back down. We got some, uh, we have people today, I'm sure, that uh, somebody would ask him uh, to shut up or hush up or uh, they'll change the law where uh, maybe some of these days us, uh, us ministers won't be able uh, to, to preach the gospel. But I'm telling you today, as long as God has called you into the ministry, we need to preach the gospel and, and take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. We got people today that will not take stands. We got people preachers today will not take a stand in a pulpit uh, my friend for, for what's right is wrong but somebody might ask him to resign uh, from their position in the church ladies and gentlemen I'm telling you what we are going to be give account to God some of these days for uh, these things as I said there a moment ago the wind was here the witness was just like before over the years he simply did not uh, back down he did not act in a cowardly and comp uh, compromising uh, manner by closing the windows. He went to about his usual prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we need to do. You know I'm talking about praying now. Uh, I'll go out in restaurants and eat, and I go out in restaurants and eat with, uh, I've seen people uh, in churches uh, throughout the, the community. They'll go to church on Sunday and uh, in Sunday school, and they'll sing in the choir, and they'll go out and sit down uh, at the lunch table in the restaurant, and they start cramming it in just as fast as they can get in, and never bow their head and ask the blessings on the food. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you something. If you're trying your best to live a life for the Lord Jesus Christ, then my friend, you should not be ashamed of him. He wasn't ashamed of you. He hung on the cross uh, in shame for you. Listen, you either, you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. And if you don't know what to say, just bow your head and say, Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the message that our pastor brought today. We ask you now to bless this food that, it, uh, that has been prepared before us and bless the hands that has prepared it. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, take a stand for Jesus. Don't be ashamed of him. I hope today that this message is uh, speaking to your heart today that the Holy Spirit will convict you uh, when you sit down to eat and you don't pray. Now there's been times that I've started taking a bite of food and maybe took two or three bites and me are talking and uh, first thing you know the Holy Spirit has spoke to me or to my uh, wife. Uh, we have not asked a blessing yet and I will bow my head and ask the blessing. I understand those things but ladies and gentlemen listen we need to be obedient to God. We need to let our light shine because you might be the only Bible that anybody will ever uh, pick up and uh, read. So Daniel here, he went three times a day and he prayed and he gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. In verse 11 there he says, and then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and make supplications to his God. Now these men, ladies and gentlemen, they were uh, waiting for Daniel. I'm telling you today that the devil is waiting for you. He will mess with you. He will mess with you in your sleep. He'll mess while you're up walking around. He'll mess with you while you're uh, reading God's word. He'll mess with the preacher while the preacher is preaching, my friend. The devil is on the rampage. He is walking to and fro seeking whom he may devour. But we see these men here were waiting for Daniel and that was a uh, 
and this was a complaint. This man had a reputation and they had a feeling that he would not back down. They knew, they knew that this man believed in his God and that he would not back down. Ladies and gentlemen, does people know that the God that you believe in, would you back down today if somebody caught you praying and somebody asked you well, if you was a Christian? Ladies and gentlemen, would you tell him, yes, I'm a Christian. But ladies and gentlemen, we don't only say that we're a Christian. We need to feel, I mean, we need to uh, uh, let people see our light shine and, and uh, let it reflect in us as a Christian. Do not be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here in verse 12. Well, let me go back up here again in, in verse uh, In verse 11, and said, These men assembled and found Daniel praying, making supplication before his God. In verse 12, now, then they came near and they spoke before the king concerning the king the Greek. What they done here, as he says, Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or a man with Within 30 days, except of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, the, This thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. There in, in verse 12. Ladies and gentlemen, what they done here, they went to the king and said, Now king, now you signed this decree here that if anybody would... Uh, not obey this decree that they will be cast into a den of lions. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'll tell you what, people out there today, they're always watching. They're always watching you to see for you to make a mistake. And when you make a mistake, they run and tell the pastor or they tell the deacons and they do this and they do that and they want to keep an uproar in the church all the time. Just keep something going all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, we as Christians, we need to pray for our pastor. We need to pray uh, for those who are assembling together on Sunday mornings. We need to pray that lost souls will come to know Jesus Christ. My friend, whether it's children or whether it's adults, we need to be on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to let people know that we are Christians and that we are not ashamed of the God that we serve. In verse 13, he says, Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judea, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that, has, that he has signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. They said, King Daniel here, he's still doing the same thing. He's still going back and opening his windows, praying toward Jerusalem as he had it did a fourth time. He's still doing it. And after uh, you sign this uh, decree or let's say an ordinance or a law, that and he's doing this. In verse 14, he said, then the king, when he heard these words, was so displeased with himself, and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Now verse 15 says, And these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians, there that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. They said, you signed this law into effect and you cannot change it. It has to be enforced, ladies and gentlemen. It can't go back to the general assembly or anything like that and, and change these laws here, what they was talking about here uh, with the Medes and the Persians. In verse 16, Starting in verse 16, and uh, we see here that Daniel began, he was cast into the lion's den. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and they cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thy servants continue, he will deliver thee. The king was telling Daniel, he says, the, the God that you serve will deliver thee. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, here was this man, uh, this king, he had already signed this decree. He was going to throw his friend into the uh, into the den of lions, but he he had faith in this Daniel here that uh, this God that Daniel served that would deliver him. 
I'm telling you what, Jesus will deliver us today. He will deliver us. He will set us free. My friend, a lot of times we are uh, uh, wrapped up in our uh, sins. We, we are wrapped up in bonds and stocks and, 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 and because of the sins in our life. But I'm telling you today that Jesus Christ, He will set you free. He will set you free and my friend, indeed you will be free. But we see here that uh, here that they going to take Daniel here and cast him into the den of lions. Now can you imagine there uh, looking in that uh, lion's den where these lions are walking around they probably hadn't been fed for two or three days. Now here in verse 17 he says, and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. So they brought a stone over here. They covered the, uh, put a lid on it, and the king sealed it with his own signet. Now, a signet uh, in those days was a, a type of a ring that had an insignia on it, and they would put something like a clay or, or something that was moist, uh, padded out, and the king would take it and he'd uh, have that ring on his fist, and he would uh, uh, seal that, put that seal on there, just like a notary would the day when they would sign. Uh, when you sign a notarized uh, statement, you need something to be notarized, then they would uh, put a notary on. So what the king done, he sealed it here. So he said, and the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords and the purpose of that not be changed to concerning Daniel. Now here in verse 18 of uh, uh, chapter 6, we see here that the delivery of God here in this passage here uh, through 16 through uh, 24. And, the, and verse 18 says, and the king, and the king went to his, uh, to his palace and he passed the night fasting and, uh, and neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. Now let me read that verse again. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. In other words, he wasn't eating. Didn't have no appetite. And he said, neither were there instruments or music. There was no dancing or, or no eating or uh, uh, socializing before him. And the Bible says, and his sleep went from him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something today, and you better listen with attentive ear. You cannot uh, mess with a man of God that man God has called a man into his service and talk bad about him and put him down and walk on top of him and, and <clears throat> tells all kind of tales on him because I'm going to tell you some of these days it's going to come back to you here just like his king here did he said uh, that he the night was fasting neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him he could not sleep I'm telling you God will bring all things uh, to your remembrance in verse 19 the Bible says then the king rose very early in the morning my friend I'm saying that he was ready to get up he was glad to go in up and the Bible says here said so Bill how do you know that he said the Bible says here and went in haste my friend uh, and unto the den of lions. I can just visualize in my mind. Here's this old king boy. He couldn't sleep during the night. He was hungry. Uh, he couldn't eat. Uh, he didn't have no music. Uh, the, 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 this was bothering him because he threw a man of God into a den of lions and hoping that he would be devoured uh, by the lions. But the Bible says here he went in haste. He, went, he ran down there to check on uh, old Daniel there in the den of lions. Now here in verse 20. We see in uh, chapter 6 of Daniel, he says, And when he came to the den, he cried, he cried with a, with a laminated voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said, Daniel. And in other words, he cried out. He said, Oh, Daniel, oh, Daniel, the servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou hast service continued able to deliver thee from the lions. He said, listen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he said, Daniel, is that God that you serve, has he delivered you uh, from the these den of lions? And what does he do? Down here in verse 20, he says, and then said Daniel to the king, live forever. My friend, I'm telling you, I can just imagine uh, uh, looking in there and probably uh, the, God, God closed the lion's mouth and I just imagine that old Daniel just took his head and he said, well, I'll just lay on my couch tonight. He, the old lion just lined up. Now listen, uh, I'm not... Uh, 
well, I'm just exaggerating here, but just visualize in your mind. Just say, old Daniel, the God took those lines, he laid them in the line, and old Daniel just stretched out on that like he was laying out on a uh, peely prosthetic mattress, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, old Daniel just laying there, uh, cooling his heels. Then, in verse 22, the Bible says, My God has sent his angels. Amen. God sends his angels. God sent his angels to protect his uh, people. My God had sent his angels and had shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocence was found in me and also before the king. O oh, king, have I done no hurt. Daniel told me, said, King, I had done nothing. And now, verse 23, he said, Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no and no matter of hurt. Listen ladies and gentlemen, no matter of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. My friend, the God that I serve today, my friend, he can do anything, anytime, anywhere he wants to. My friend, he is, uh, uh, God is still in heaven. As I said a moment ago, my Jesus, my heavenly father is seated at the right hand of his father making intercessions for me when I pray unto, unto the heavenly father. Now in verse 24 he said, and the king commanded. Now listen ladies and gentlemen what, what the king commanded here. He said, and the king commanded they brought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, not only them ladies and gentlemen, but their children and their wives and the lions had the mystery of them and they break all of their bones in pieces of every and they came at the bottom of the den. Now ladies and gentlemen here is what happened here after this. In verse 25 he says then the king Darius wrote unto all the people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you. Verse 26, he said, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is a living God. The king realized that the Daniel, uh, the, that Daniel served a true and living God. And he said, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. My friend, let me tell you something today. If you are serving some other God, there's not but one true living God. And that's my God with a big capital G. Ladies and gentlemen, dot these other G little G's out there, little G-O-D-S. Absolutely. My God is a man that can save, is a God that can save you uh, uh, from uh the, the den of the lions he can save you he can take your life or he can he can give life and I'm telling you today ladies and gentlemen if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord then you need to have Christ to come in uh, to your heart and life in verse 27 he says he delivered and he rescued and he worked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions so this Daniel ladies and gentlemen prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyprus of Persia. Ladies and gentlemen, God will take care of his people. God will take care of his people. You don't want to be like the king up here that, that lost his appetite. He couldn't sleep. His sleep went from him. Listen, somebody is listening to this message today that makes fun of a true and living God. I wouldn't be in your shoes for your socks. I'm telling you, the person that does not fear God, I do not want to be around them. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Heavenly Father, we've been obedient to the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, dear Jesus, that I'm serving a God who is a true and living God who is able to do anything, anytime, anywhere. And Lord, I pray and ask you to give me the strength and the courage, Father, to be like Daniel, to take a stand and lift up the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. And Father, I pray, Father, for these people that says that they are a man of God and they live one way and they do something else. And Lord, if they not been truly born again, then I pray God with the Holy Spirit will convict them. 
As I heard one preacher who holds a doctorate degree made a comment that he was in school for five years and if he had died, he would have died and went to hell. And he got on his knees and he prayed and said, Lord, if I'm going to preach, I need to be saved. And he invited you into his heart and into his life. And he's a great man of God today. Father, I pray today, help me. Help me that people can see Jesus in me. Help me, Father, to be the Christian husband I need to be, the Christian father I need to be, the, the Christian grandparent that I need to be, the, the, the Christian church member that I need to be. Father, I pray for myself as well as I pray for the others out here. Now, Father, again, we pray, Father, for that soul's nearest hell. We pray, dear God, that, Lord, that you will speak to their heart, that they will humble their heart, and they turn their heart and their life over to you. Thank you, dear Jesus, for the many blessings of life and just life itself. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after these messages in song. Of a mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet As Gabriel sounds the call Cause at the midnight cry We'll be going home When Jesus steps out Jesus steps out. 
If tomorrow I never see If I had no more blessings in store I'd never ask or wonder why If I die today I can honestly say I've had a wonderful life I've had some good times, I've seen the bad But thanks to Jesus, my heart's not sad I'm happy today Even though I have some regrets There's one thing I'll never forget Jesus Stood by my side all of the way I've had a wonderful life The Lord's been so good to me I've had a wonderful life 
If tomorrow I never see If I had no more blessings in store I'd never ask or wonder why If I die today I can honestly say I've had a wonderful life I've had a wonderful life The Lord been so good to me I've had a wonderful life If tomorrow I never see If I had no more blessings in store I'd never ask or wonder why If I die today I can honestly say I've had a wonderful life If I had no more blessings in store I'd never ask or wonder why If I die today, I can honestly say I've had a wonderful life I've had a wonderful life I've had a wonderful life
Radio friends, our time has come and gone. We hope there's been a message in song or a word from God's word that has blessed your heart or been a spiritually uplift to you. Again, I'd like to remind you, you can listen on YouTube.com, Right Side Ministries, or write to the Right Side Ministry, P.O. Box 1346, Berea, Kentucky, 4043. Or you can email me at the Right Side Ministry at Hotmail.com. Until you hear my voice again, may the riches 